water. All right, here we go. Let's jump into it. Welcome back to another episode of Jake's Thoughts. Okay, now we're starting off with the sunglasses on today because honestly, I don't know if you remember if you are, if you're not a part of the team, you don't know that my window was broken, right? And there was it was kind of loud, and I had to kind of make sure that I had to record on times where it was quiet or stuff like that because it's just the noise would be coming through. And uh, it was a real bitch, right? And the weather was just all hot in here and stuff like that. And it's starting to cool down. And I was like, wow, man. What do we do about this window? You know what I'm saying? But it came in today. This guy came in and he fixed it for free. He just walked in to my house, knock, knock, let him in. And he fixed it. I don't know how or why, but that's just what happened. I thought I was going to have to pay, but I didn't. And it was totally cool and a serious blessing. So, you know, it's so bright in here. I had to put these sunglasses on. Plus, I got them while I was in Paris. So, uh, a French man made them for me. Custom built for my face and everything. So, you know, I'm wearing them and I'm a little cold inside the house today. So, I have my Land Rover shirt on. This really cool one. that I'll probably, I'll, And then I got put this on because it has fur and it's kind of comfy and I was cold. But I'm probably going to warm up. So, I'll take this off here in a minute. And I'm really not rushing to get in this episode as you can tell because... It's going to be a doozy. It's going to be a long one. Okay, let's just be honest with one another. It's going to be a long episode. Because I have a lot of topics to cover. Okay? Because I'm back from my Europe travel of six different countries. And I have my tips, my tricks, my overall thoughts. Just everything on it. I stored it in this journal here. And I wrote almost every day. And then I also uh, just wrote down some of my favorite bullet points of each country and just other things in here. That I'm about to go over. And it's going to be really good. You're going to be like, wow. I feel like I need to go. I need to go see these places. But that's kind of the thing. Do you need to go see these places? Is what I'm going to get to. Alright, so there's no real rush here. We're going to just start off with. Uh, on the plane. Alright, the plane right there. I left from Atlanta, Hartsfield, Jackson. Because I live in Atlanta, right? And I'm flying to Patty, Paris CDG. Or CGD, whatever the fuck it was. And uh, it was not a problem. I had to carry. I went backpacking with my little brother. Let's just yeah. Let's get some of the main things out of the way. Thank you. Just like I went with my little brother, right? We went for 22 days. We went to six different countries, which were Paris, France, Brussels, Bel- Belgium, Amsterdam, Netherlands, Heidelberg, Germany, or Heidelberg. I heard it being pronounced so many different fucking ways. Zermatt, Switzerland, Genoa, Italy, and then back to Patty. So six, right? I think, right? Did I do that? Paris, Paris, Brussels, Amsterdam, Germany, Italy. So five. Did I only go to five? Switzerland. Ah, ha ha. Yeah, we went to six. So there you go. So here we go. The plane ride from Atlanta, it's not that bad, but they didn't even check the weight of our bags and we went backpacking. Okay. So we didn't, we didn't have the big checked bag. We just wanted to be on the move. We want to be able to be very, we wanted to be very versatile. We want, if we needed to get up and get out, we could throw on a backpack and go. We didn't want to have to backpack in a giant luggage or some shit. Right. So we went backpacking big bags that hurt your fucking back, but it was worth it. I think that's the best mode of transportation or travel, especially when you're in that kind of place. I'm already taking this thing off. I have to. I'm getting a little... I'm cooking. I'm cooking in this thing now, so it's coming off. But, yeah. <coughs> if you're going to go traveling, you have to go backpacking because you don't want to carry all this extra luggage and bullshit. You, that, that was just... That was the best idea. All right, so then you're on your plane. So this is what we did. I'm terrified of plane travel. This is how my brain works. This is how my brain works. If I'm in a plane, and what I notice is if I'm in any other mode of transportation, boat, bus, train, car, bike, I'm on a horse, I'm on a motorcycle, any of them, if I'm bumping, I'm cool. But the second I'm in the air, if there's something that goes like this one time, oh, I'm done. And my my brain works like this. I feel this one bump. And then you know what that means? That means the plane is going to go 30,000, 20,000, 10,000. The masks are going to drop down. And we're like, ah, babies are going to be crying. Ah, the stewardess is hitting the fucking roof of the cabin. Ah, and then I'm like, I love you to whoever I'm sitting with. This is especially in this case, my little brother. I love you, bro. Ah, and then you hit the fucking water and then you fucking survive. Oh, my God. You're one of the three survivors in the fucking Atlantic Ocean, right? 
You're one of the three survivors. And you look over to your loved one. In this case, my little brother. And what if his fucking, he's dead, obliterated. Brains are just all everywhere. And you're like, oh, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. My parents are going to be pissed. And then you're like, what am I going to do? And you take a little bit of his brain and you fucking shove it in your pocket and you get the fuck out of there, right? You start squirming over people. People are laying down screaming, help, help. But the plane is sinking and you're in the ocean. You can't get these people out. There's barely enough room for yourself. So you step on their fucking faces. You push through the door. And then the wood's starting to go into the water. So you swim up. And as you're swimming up to the surface, you look down. And it's just an abyss. Just fucking darkness. You can't see shit. You're just alone. And you hear the... You hear little clicks and you like, and then you hear the still ocean just, and then you look and then you're, you're, you're bleeding out of your calf, just a little blood, but it's, it's a fair amount. There's a laceration on your leg for sure. And you're like, fuck, my leg is bleeding out in this abyss. And then you pop up. You're like, I got to breathe. So you get right. And then you look around and two other people are over there. They go, Hey. So you fucking you look and and then you start going, you start swimming, hoping that nothing just comes up and rawr, grabs you by the leg real fast and sinks you into that deep abyss. And then you get to those you get to those people and you're like, oh, what happened? Did you guys get a raft? Did you guys get anything? Are you guys okay? And they're like, no, we couldn't get anything. And then one of them's like, my baby's in there. And you're like, this bitch ain't gonna last. So then, <laughs> what do you do, man? You're just sitting there waiting in the ocean. And you don't know if they called for help. You don't know if help's coming. And you're bleeding out in the fucking Atlantic Ocean. That's where my brain goes on one of these. Just one. Boom. That's where my... Yeah. So I can't... I'm not good with planes. Okay? So what had happened... <laughs> that was such a long diversion into that. But that's how my brain works. So you know. Okay? So you're on this plane. On the plane right there... Okay, here we go. I have wine, sleep, and food. Okay? I drank four bottles, like the, it's probably a good, what is that? Maybe <laughs> way off on inches, four or five inches, maybe, of a wine bottle. Not that big, but it was a fair amount. It was a, probably eight ounces, eight ounces of wine. And I drank four of those. Okay. I'm sorry. I had to, white wine. The meal was pretty good, especially for like, cause I've been on flights where they give you like peanuts, salted peanuts. And they're like, there you go, bitch. And you're like. All right, I guess, dude. What's the point of the fucking tray then? Why do we have this tray right here if you're giving me fucking peanuts? You know what I'm saying? This was like a three-course meal. It was pretty nice. And they had wine and other drinks and stuff like that. So, I, you know, I appreciated it. I liked it. And I also took some things beforehand since I was in the States so that when I was on the plane, I went like this. I wasn't snoring, but so you get the point. Um, Fell asleep. Honestly, there's a little turbulence, but I was so knocked up and drunk that I was like, fuck yeah, baby. I don't even care. Like, I was like Rick from Rick and Morty. Just like, fuck it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was that guy. And then I got some sleep. Oh, here's another thing. They didn't even check my bag weight. On the website, it says I could have 26.6 pounds. Now, that is such a specific number that you're like, wow, these bitches are really going to be holding up this standard. 26.6. Okay, so then you're like, really, you're trying to make sure it was okay and everything. So you get there and you're like, fuck, I hope my bag's not over because I don't want to pay the shit. What am I going to take out? And where am I, I going to fucking send it home? Like, what, do, what am I going to do? And then you, you go and no one checks your bag. What was the fucking point? Why did you tell me that shit? You know. So anyway, you, the, that that was a flight. If you want to know. Now let's get into landing in the serious fun stuff of the nine. Or not nine. The six countries. You ready? Here we go. My notes on Paris. <laughs> my first thing is cigarettes. So yeah, I vaped all the time. I'm sure you guys seen me vape in other episodes. I vaped for years. But then I went to uh, Europe and everyone smokes cigarettes. Nobody vapes. They do have some. I saw some people vaping. But then I saw a majority smoking cigarettes. And I was like, you know what? If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it now. So I started smoking cigarettes. Now I'm a cigarette smoker. I am. But I now, but it's not really much anymore since I'm back in the U.S. I've kind of tapered off of everything. So that's kind of interesting. But uh, it made a great transition, honestly, from vapes to cigarettes. Because I felt better smoking cigarettes than I did vaping. Fun enough. But those are also European cigarettes where I doubt they have the terrible shit in it. They're actually not bad. And we smoked the really slim ones. 
you know, like the a very slim cigarette. It wasn't like a big thick one, or like normal size. I shouldn't say thick one, but you know, you know what I'm fucking talking about. Okay, so we had the cigarettes, so now I'm smoking cigarettes, right? And I'm like, how what's our mode of transportation? A tandem bike, right? Me and my little brother. What are we gonna do? We're gonna tandem bike throughout Paris, France, and that's what we did. We tore through that fucking city. Okay, and now here's a fun part. You're clearly a tourist. You're clearly a tourist. Like everybody knows, can tell just by mainly your clothing and that you don't really know the language. I mean, I knew je sais comment parler un peu français. A little, okay, just a little bit. Ooh. What is it? Hold on. I'm trying to remember this, this phrase. Uh, je peux mon, mon sentir. I, th- I can get by, you know? I know a little bit. Un peu. <laughs> anyway, that was, that's my favorite. Just a little. And people would be like, oh, you know French? I'd be like, un peu. Just a little. <laughs> that was fun to see the reaction and shit. But anyway, maybe that's not even the right words, but I, I believe it is because that's what my French tutor taught me. Also, this is a French book. It literally says learn French right here. You probably can't see it, but whatever. Anyway, so we were tandem biking through this town. And you, so some of the people were like this. They would see us on the tandem bike and they'd be like, oh, yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, yeah, dude, right back at you, man. Thank you. Yes, whatever that was. I don't know, but I saw a couple of people go like this. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just keep pedaling. Just keep fucking pedaling. Let's get the fuck out of here. And then you just keep going, right? That was that was the thing. And then, all right, people were making out in the streets. That's true. That's really true. People were making out in the streets. It was interesting. Me and my little brother would be at a cafe late at night drinking. I would have gin and tonics or wine, and he would have mainly wine or mojitos. We would be smoking cigarettes, just talking, and you would see people come. Dude, this is the most pimping shit ever that happened in Paris. This is the most. This was so wild to see, like, in action. So what would happen is me and my little brother were sitting at this cafe, right? And guys would be walking with women, their girl, or just some girl they met, or whatever. I don't know their status, right? I don't know. I shouldn't claim their relationship status on these people. But what would happen is the guy would be walking with her, right? And then you'd be like, oh, I guess they're about to, like, drive away or get out of here. And then he goes and he unlocks his bike. And you're like, oh, I guess, I guess uh, he's going to leave or something. Like, what are they going to do on this bike? And then he's like, all right, so, you know, come on. And then she gets on the bike, right? Not She doesn't sit on the seat. She sits, like, on the frame with her half or, like, one side of her legs or just hanging on, on one side. She's not, like, sitting on it. She's Both legs are over on one side, okay? And then the guy gets on the bike and he's like, okay, let's go. And he just starts pedaling away. Could you imagine? (laughs) Could you imagine, dude, if you're like with your girl and then some French dude comes up on a bike and then he's like, hey, monsieur, madame, je t'aime, you know, je, uh, he starts talking all French to her. And then she's like, oh my God. And then he's like, come on, on." and then she gets on his bike. And then he gets on his bike and starts pedaling away with your girl. That is the most. <laughs> they should. Do you remember those gold digger the videos where it's like this guy would pull up on a Lamborghini. And he's like, you want to hop in? You want to hop in? Like, I just got this thing. It's not even bad. Mainly cheap blue with some fake money. Or, you know, just whatever. And the girl would be like, oh, that's your car. And you'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah come on in. And then she's like, okay. Gets in. He's like, actually, I don't fuck with gold diggers. <laughs> do, do it with a bike. Do it with a bike. Go up to him and be like, hey, come here. How you? I can't talk in the French accent, but hey, don't you want to ride on this bike? Eh? And then they hop on into your girl. Gone. Some other dude pedaling away with your girl. That was some crazy shit, honestly. I love seeing that. Okay, so then, yeah, people were making out in the streets. The food, oh my good God, dude. The food was fucking insane. We would, we treated ourselves to this really good expensive one meal. It was like a, it was a filet mignon steak, peppercorn steak with some kind of sauce on it. And then these potatoes, which I don't even know the name of the fucking potato. But it was like a breakfast potato, but not a breakfast potato. It was like peeled. And it was just a, just white. And it was so soft. And it was like mashed potatoes, but just in these little cubes that somehow they... 
It was the best shit ever. I was like, oh, these guys don't fuck around. They know how to do it. And then you finish off with your wine and then a little espresso and then a cigarette. Dude, I'm not trying to be that guy. But when you actually go do that shit, you're like, oh, hello, little poor boy. Right? It, you feel it's a different feeling. It really is. Let's just be honest. Let me see here. You, I also thought there were going to be a lot of mimes in Paris for some reason. Or it was going to be like Ratatouille because, you know. And there was going to be a lot of rats and mimes and shit. I didn't see one mime. And there were like no rats. So that really just... That threw a wrench in my spirits, honestly. That kind of hurt my heart. Let's go. Um, so I learned how to speak a little French. So that kind of held. I don't really want to talk about that. Oh, I wore Sperry shoes. I don't even... I think they were... I think polo Sperry shoes because I wanted to wear them when I went and saw the Eiffel Tower. And dude, I wore them and I got the worst blisters on the back of my Achilles because it was rubbed so raw and bleeding out of my the back of my foot that I was like, fuck this. Because you walk for an hour and a half down and back and I'm like, oh, dude, I can definitely walk in, in these shoes. No, you can't. No, you can't. That was the worst idea. <sighs> I had a lot of gin tonic. One in my gin and tonics, they put fucking some kind of berry in it. Like little, 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 little blueberries all in my gin and tonic. And they would put lemon and lime. And it would come in this cool glass, like a king glass, like a fucking chalice. It's like, whoa, dude. These people don't fuck around. Paris was dope. It was really cool. Big fan of Paris. It was kind of expensive, but it's worth the fucking money because you're there. Why not? Right? Let me see any negative things about Paris. Not in my notes here. Okay, so then we go on a train. Two-hour train ride to Brussels, Belgium. Okay. Now let's just get down to the nitty-gritty. This place is a shithole. Not even cool compared to Paris. Like, you go from Paris to this place, you're like, oh, this place is a fucking dump. Like, I'm ready to go. Oh, I got these glasses in Paris. I feel like I already said that. But I, I'm going to take them off since we're done talking about Paris. I just wanted to wear them until then. Okay, so we're in Brussels, and you're like, this place is a fucking shithole. Like, can we, let's dip. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? It's not that cool. So, we, what do they have good there? Halal food. I think that was the name of it. We had a, an insane amount of halal food. And I'll be honest with you. So it was kind of sketchy. You're like, what kind of meat is this? Like, what am I, what am I about to eat? You know what I mean? But it actually wasn't that bad. So I'd give it a... Halal food, I'd give it a 7.5 out of 10, if we're being honest with one another. The architecture was pretty cool, the Grand Palace. Um, the Grand Palace was like this giant, if you thought Batman lived in like a cool mansion, I imagine this is what Batman would actually live in, the Grand Palace. It was pretty fucking cool. Mainly the architecture, that's about it. The people were not that nice, honestly. We went to this one restaurant called The Chicken Way because we thought it would be kind of good for some reason. It just made you shit your fucking brains out if we're being honest with one another. I mean, but the, so the customer, the main guy that worked the cashier was the same age as us and he was nice, but then his manager was a total dick to us. So you go, and uh, some other people were assholes to us. So you go, yeah, yeah, they were kind of shitty. Don't go there. They had an insane amount of chocolate though. If you like chocolate, you can go buy any store has chocolate i'm not even joking it could be a fucking jewelry store and they'll have a little chocolate section everywhere has chocolate i don't know why that's just how it is and i got this pinky ring in belgium for this from this guy and i got this blue jumpsuit me and my little brother got matching blue jumpsuits and that leads us into our next topic so skip over brussels you don't fucking need to go there it's a waste honestly kind of is so you hop on this other train ride. I think it was like three hours or something. And then I'll, I'll talk about trains after Amsterdam. And then you arrive in Amsterdam, Netherlands. <sighs> now here's the deal. Let's just talk about their drugs first. Because I tried them all. I tried their edibles. I tried their marijuana. And I tried their truffles. And you know what? There's not a fucking thing you can do about it. Because it's legal there, bitch. So ha ha ha. Joke's on you, motherfucker. Anyway. The weed, subpar. I mean, it's it's some mid shit. In effect, for effect, mid. You know, it looks and smells cool, but like normal, mid. Okay? America is way better. Let's just be honest. Probably way worse for you. 
but way better for a fact. Truffles, wank wank, subpar, dude. Okay, they had a great feeling. My feelings were happiness and inner peace. That like gives a little description of which tr- if you get you can get sur- different types of truffles. Each one has its own little category and description for it. The one I got was inner peace, happiness, that kind of thing, laughter, and I did feel that. I did feel it. I did have to work for those feelings and keep telling myself I'm supposed to be feeling those feelings because of the drug because. I didn't really feel anything at first, right? So I had to really play into it. It's nowhere near Americans. America's fucking mushrooms. Nothing even close. Edibles. Literally not shit. They don't even look at them. They're the worst. It was literally just eat. You could just go eat a normal dessert. You don't need to eat the fucking edible brownie or the edible lemon bar or the edible fucking muffin. Don't. Just go eat a normal muffin. Or something. Because you're going to get the same effect. It was dog shit. Nothing happened. But that's true. I've never really. I've had one edible. In all my years. That really did anything. And I, I'm chasing that feeling. Don't think I'm like trying to brag about it. I'm chasing that feeling again. But none of them can do it. Amsterdam was insanely photogenic. Like it was just beautiful. It really was. It was. There's just water running through all of the. Like every couple. You know block or two there's another river that runs through the whole place and there's little boats passing by there's flowers everywhere people are nice it's a very populated city very populated okay so my uh, what does this say parks oh yeah you have to go to the parks ours was a new wunderland wonderland wonderland park maybe if I'm thinking that correctly, that was the most beautiful park. We went up and down that thing like many times. You have to go see their parks, especially when you're doing these activities. Don't just be walking throughout the streets with it, right? Oh, I need to put this down real fast and me talk about this. Uh, so yeah, if you're in Amsterdam and you go, should we go to Brussels? No, skip over Brussels. What you should do is go to Amsterdam, do that for a day or two, and then go explore another part of the Netherlands, like their waterfalls or their cliffs or shit like that. I wish I would have done that. Knowing that now, don't go to Brussels. Do something cooler in the Netherlands. Then you hop on another train. Oh, do 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 do. Their tree fruits were so weird. It was interesting. Okay, so when so we're sitting in this park, right? And fruits or whatever whatever the fuck they are, nuts. I don't know what they are. Would fall from the trees. And I'll put up pictures. Boom. One is like a spike ball. It was like a ball with all these spikes on it. And I was like, whoa, that's fucking cool looking. And then they also dropped these other ones. I think they were called like Buckeyes. I think it was a Buckeye. It was the name of the the uh, the uh, fucking thing that fell. But it was pretty cool to see like uh, their stuff. Like, oh, for some reason I thought there would be something similar. This is We don't have either one of these where I live. Neither one of these. That's kind of cool. And it's just falling from your tree. For some reason, I thought that was interesting. Um, so then you get on another train, dude. Now, here's the thing about trains. That's just their mode of transportation there. But I honestly, if you don't know anything about trains, it fucking sucks. It sucks, dude. If you're not used to being on a train, just sitting there like this. Because it, it, it wiggles. It's not like still bullet train style. It's like you're going like this. So if you can fall asleep like this or just leaning and kind of bouncing like that, yeah, you're good. You're solid. But if not, then you just have to sit there and read. You can't do anything. You can't. There's a little bar. You can go take a shit or you can go to the bar and you get a little sandwich or something depending on how long your train ride is. But going on the trains is fucking sucks. I would I don't like it. But it's their motive. It's the best way to do it, I think. Just for the price and, you know, the deal we got, what we went to go see and that kind of thing. It was worth it. They do suck, though. Let's just be real with one another. Then we go to Germany. Heidelberg. Now, here's the deal. Um, what I have to do is every, like, couple 30 minutes or something, we have to restart this camera. So I'm going to restart it right now real fast before I get into the shithole of Germany and just trash them. So be ready. You ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. And we're back. Look at that. Look how amazing that is. But okay, so we're in, we went to Heidelberg, Germany, or Hildeberg. I've heard it being pronounced multiple times, different different times and different styles, but I believe it's Heidelberg. Now, here's the deal. We didn't want to go to Frankfurt. We didn't want to go to Nuremberg or some of these other places because people had been to them, and it was kind of a last-minute 
choice to go here because it, when we looked at the most beautiful places, this was one of them. And it was supposed to be like this old castle village style. And it was that, but it's boring as fuck, man. It really is. It's like there's nothing to do here, actually. I thought there was going to be a lot cooler things to do, but after you go on the hike and you do see them, after you go see the main things, you're kind of like, I mean, I guess we can kind of just like be a local, see what these people do, but then you just, what does that mean you do? You just eat and shop. So then you're like, oh, I guess I am just a tourist because I don't have a job here and I don't know anyone else. Right? So that's, it's kind of a bitch. Let's just be honest. That kind of sucked. Germany, but here's the best part. So we saw this castle where we're up in a castle looking down on the village. That was pretty cool to be like on an old castle. It really felt like Game of Thrones or some type of shit. Um, the pastries were so much better than anyone else. They had the best pastries. Just like if you go to Publix and you go to their bakery section, look on the tables. Imagine that same shit, but times 20. Way better. Just way more delicious. We had way better just food in general. Their food was so good. Jaeger. We saw, we okay, we went to this place called the Lion's Den. It was a bar and lounge. And the owner came up to me and my little brother. And he kept talking to us. And he goes, Jaeger runs through this vein. And Espresso runs through this one. And we went, hell yeah. Nice, dude. Okay, man. Good for you. And then he sent over two free shots of Jaeger chilled. And we were like, badass, man. I guess he maybe had known us. I don't know. This is the lion's den. So let's get the fuck out of here. Um, I got this chain gold chain bracelet from there, from Germany. My little brother got some uh, pearls. He also bought a Louis Vuitton uh, necklace in Paris. But that that's, I forgot to mention that. Okay, now here's the shithole parts about Germany. This is how you know that they were the fucking Nazis. You ready? Here's my two biggest complaints about fucking Germany. First of all, we went to McDonald's in Germany because we went to McDonald's in every country because we had to go try it except for Italy. But then we did, we went in Germany, right? And I got a happy meal because I wasn't that hungry. And I thought it would be the perfect amount. You literally get a burger, you get fries, you get another little item and a toy and you get a cool box. Why not? I'll do the happy meal. These motherfuckers didn't give me a toy in my Happy Meal. What kind of shit is that? Really? Wow. Could you imagine being a little kid and being like, I'm so excited for my toy. Or, or you could be a 22-year-old also still excited for his toy. And then you don't get one. Those fuckers. And then you go off on the train and you're like, oh, here's our, here's our stop, right? And you're like, oh, we really got to piss. So you go and you find the restroom and then you try and walk in and it's like, the German, whatever the fuck. And you're like, I don't know this language. What am I supposed to do? And the guy's like, you have to pay. And then you're like, nah, go fuck yourself. You're lying. And then you ask some other people and they're like, you have to pay. And then you're like, who, who's this janitor guy that's just standing in there? Hey dude, come here. What do we have to do? And he's like, you have to pay. And you're like, no chance. You have to pay to use the bathroom here. No, you have to pay to take a piss. You guys clearly were the fucking Nazis. Like, this was not cool. In the end, you had to wear a mask in Germany. And they're fucking, the guy, there's a guy that comes and stand, scans your tickets every time from Paris to Brussels to Brussels to Amsterdam to, to every stop. Some other guy is going to come along at some point and scan your ticket to make sure you're supposed to be on this train and you have a ticket. Everyone else was nice up to this point, except for the guy coming in in Germany. The guy in Germany was an asshole. You're like, cool, starting off strong. And then you got to pay for you to take a piss. And you're like, no way. And then you go to McDonald's and you get a, a meal and there's no toy. And you're like, and then you're like having to wear your mask because people are like, put your mask, or put your mask on. And you're like, bro, no one else is making us wear masks. How are we supposed to know that we had to wear a mask here? No one told us. And if they did, I don't know your fucking language. So they were, they were not the nicest, except for the guy who gave us the free shot of Jaeger, but we were in the lion's den. If you're trying to, if you're picking up what I'm laying down now that I'm thinking about it, he was, he was probably trying to do some shit on it. So just skip over Germany if you can. Yeah. So then we go on this train ride fucking like five hours to go Switzerland, to Zermatt, Switzerland. Okay. Now this was easily the best spot. 
the best place. If you were going to go to any places that I'm listing, go to Switzerland. If you're like, oh man, I don't know. I can only go to one spot in Switzerland, Zermatt, Switzerland. This was the coolest. To take the train into these Swiss Alps was so fucking wild. Now, I'm from Georgia. I live in a place right next on in the Appalachian Mountains, in the thing, right? So I'm used to mountains. Nah, bitch. You think those are big? <laughs> no, not even fucking close. The Swiss Alps are like you. I was amazed. Like, holy shit. These things are huge. Okay. And really beautiful. And you're just staying in this little village in between these giant Alps. It's really cool. All right. So the Alps are really cool. And then it's cold as a motherfucker. Paris, it's not, it wasn't cold. Brussels wasn't really that cold until nighttime. Amsterdam, not really that chilly. You go to Germany, not cold at all. Then you go down to Switzerland and you're cold as fuck. And you're like, oh, good to know. But what we did was we went on this hike to go see the Matterhorn. If you don't know the Matterhorn, here's a picture I took of that one. Um, it's this giant mountain, pretty much, in the Swiss Alps, right next to our village. And you can go on this four-mile hike out, and, four, and it's four miles out and then four miles back. And me and my little brother did it. And it was listed as, like, easy slash moderate. And I'll tell you what, they fucking lied. Or they're just way better at hiking. Because it's, like, this steep for four miles. So it was not that fun. The hike itself was it, but honestly, you, you're with your brother and you see these amazing views, so it's kind of worth it. But at the same time, you're like, fuck, man. Could they, you know, let us know about this a little bit fucking better next time? Those assholes. But it, honestly, the views were pretty good. And then what was interesting was when you were in the village, it wasn't windy. But when you were up like four miles closer and you're not even near the fucking Matterhorn, but you, you're closer four miles. The wind is insane. It's so fucking windy and it's cold as fuck winds. Me and him, me and my little brother bunkered down and we're smoking cigarettes underneath this patch and just kind of sat there for hours and just like sat after this four mile hike, you are beat. And then you're just sitting there next to this cool fucking Matterhorn. It was awesome. It was really cool. Love Switzerland. We uh, figured that everything, everything was so expensive, dude so expensive like a burger was thirty dollars another burger at another place twenty four dollars one was twenty set like it was a burger dude it was every, everything was insanely expensive so we ate, ate, ate out once and then i cooked two different dinners we had other breakfasts and lunches out but for dinner at least i cooked and i'll tell you what i did the first night i was like let's go something easy to see like how good a we can cook in here like I don't want to make this giant meal and be like, oh, we don't have any utensils or any of the shit. And so I made some easy. I went with, oh, some kind of uh, meat tortellini. Then I had some other meat in it. Then I had some kind of sauce. And then I, uh, I think that was it. Uh, oh, and I had garlic bread. I had a bought a baguette, cut it up, cheese, garlic, butter, and you know, all that kind of shit. And I made some garlic bread with the f tortellini and meat. And sauce. And then the next night I did um, little mini croissants, butter croissants that come in a big packet they sold there. And like it was like a sloppy joe style with meat and bacon and uh, some other meat that I had to dice up and stuff. Cooked it all. Sauce it. Cheese it. Cut into the fucking little cr butter croissant. Open it up. <laughs> stick it in there. And then you can just eat those like fucking. We were watching Rick and Morty and you would just pack and eat. Pack and eat. And you're just watching. It was really cool. Really cool, loved it. But they were really, it was really expensive there. But so beautiful, worth it. All right. And then you get on another, oh dude, this train fucking sucked. So I have my camera with me, right? And I'm thinking, hold on, let me get some water. I'm fucking dying. I have my camera with me. And oh, check out this water bottle I got. This is in Amsterdam. I don't know if you can tell, but there's all kinds of cool calligraphy and shit on it. I guess, I guess calligraphy is the right word. I don't fucking know. But hold on, let me get some water. It smells, it tastes so good. It's not just water in there. <laughs> but anyway, so the way I left Switzerland to Italy and I wanted to take a really early 
train ride because I always have my camera with me. So we get up at 6 a.m. I scheduled our train ride to be at like 6 a.m. And hold on. We wake up and we get on this train and we hadn't really slept the night before. And I'm like, we're going to see the sunrise over the Swiss Alps and I'll be able to take these pictures and these are going to be fucking dope. And they weren't because we didn't see the sunrise over the Swiss Alps because by the time the sun had risen, it's already noon. Because you can't see it over the fucking Alps because the Alps are so fucking big. So you don't see it, the sunrise over the Swiss Alps like I thought you would be able to. And then they kept the lights on in the train so the lights are blaring, glaring off the glass. So if you try to take a picture, there's a fucking orange bar in your picture. And it, was the, it just really pissed me off. And then I was like so tired when we arrived in uh, Italy. All right, so here's the deal with Italy. We went to Genoa, Italy. I thought it was going to be like uh, Portofino or I think I think that's a name. There's another one that starts with an A, but I'm totally going to mispronounce it. So I don't even want to say it. Where it's kind of like the coastal place. And uh, it was like that. But it was also the huge place of import export where it was like, this is uh, this is not the main coastland. This is like the main coast would be. 25 miles up or down. I, I don't remember which one it was, but like we we're in a good spot. But not, not the main spot. I think the main spot is over there. And we got to see some of those cool little spots and uh, some cool architecture. We walked into this cathedral that we didn't know was a cathedral. And it was fucking insane. Like, I've never seen anything like it. The amount of pictures, and or not pictures, paintings, that's like, whoa. These guys go hard in the paint and the, all the gold there. And if you were like, if they, I don't know when this was made. But if this was made hundreds of years ago and, and you were a poor person and you walked in there, no wonder, dude, this was a great, you literally were like, oh, these people must know. These people know some shit. Like these people are, uh, right. It was just a really cool building. But then they're like, <clears throat> this lady was like, can you please start taking pictures? I was like, bitch, no, click, 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 click. Deuces. That's all I wanted from this place. Click, click, click. Now I'll leave. Anyway. And then I went and got some fucking pizza. I ate so much pizza while I was in Italy. I think that was the only thing I ate other than gelato. Now here's the thing. You want un you want covered gelato, not uncovered. If you get uncovered gelato, it's good. But not as good as covered gelato. Mm -mm, not as good. So you got to get the coverage a lot. And I had so many pizzas. And the pizzas were different. I had a couple different pizzas. One, the best place to eat, no matter if, we, if you get off at Genoa PZA Principe, there's a place about four minute walk away. It's called the H&B Cafe, founded in like 1977 or 27. It was the best place to get your pizza. If you get a pizza, get a pizza. Prosciutto Kudo. So fucking good. You need to get a Negroni. Well, the Negroni was 7 out of 10. It wasn't. Or just get a gin and tonic. And then, dude, they have gelato there. Oh. If you if you show this clip of me talking about that place to the owner, he will remember me, my little brother. We, we tipped. We did good. We ate there every day. It was the best. They had the best place. So the pizza place sucked fucking cock. They were the worst not good you're like you know we're in italy right now and this is the shit you bring out this is your pizza uh okay all right you know what i mean it was like that fuck that and then we saw something really beautiful really magnificent which i won't take for granted we're in italy right me and my little brother and we're we're walking down the streets and then we sit on these steps because we just want to smoke a cigarette real fast. And we're, si we're sitting there smoking and there's this couple, older couple on the stairs. It's just like 25 stairs leading up to this building. And then we saw the people sitting there a couple days before. So we knew we could sit there and we're, this couple was there and we go up a little bit higher than them. And we're looking down at them. And uh, the guy gets up and he goes out into the street kind of and he's just like looking around. And then there's some vans parked. And it's because, okay, so imagine at this. You're walking down a little road in a very busy where all the building, there's a road and two sidewalks and the buildings are 
it's like maze runner, just buildings, tall buildings, right? And there's a little pocket where this building is actually not flush with the other buildings. It's indented in. And you can there's vans parked here, and you're on the stairs to this building, right? And she sits behind this van, and she pulls out her crack pipe. And then she pulls out her grinder, and she starts grinding away, and she starts scraping, and then she scoops into this bowl. And then she like packs down, and she hits it, and she's like, you can't really tell because we're sitting behind her, and me and my little brother are like, is she smoking crack right now? Is that what we're witnessing? And then she's like, it's like, and then the guy's just standing out there looking like this. He's going like this. He's checking. Bang, I guess making sure there's no cops. He's a great fucking wingman, the best husband, significant other, whatever dealer. I don't know what it was. But then she starts smoking crack, and then we're like, and then she leaves. I mean, my little brother, like, <laughs> dude, do you know how random it is to just be sitting somewhere and someone just comes up, sits right in front of you and smokes some crack? Hmm. That was the most random wild shit that we'd experienced the whole time that I may have ever experienced, if I'm being honest. And then we're like, you know what we got to do? We got to get out of here. Maybe this is like a crack area. So we started walking down the road and then we were like, oh, there's a, uh, you can kind of go up the mountain this way. So maybe let's go follow this path up these buildings. And we're walking, we turn the corner and another girl is sitting on the steps of this back alley, smoking crack again, and then sees us as she's inhaling the crack and goes, oh, she's like zooted out. So it's not real fast. She's like, oh, oh, yeah, pick that up. And by that time we're already walking by her like, oh my God, dude. People are just sitting around smoking crack. We got to get the fuck out of here. I don't know where we're at. I thought this was a cool place. Not that cool anymore, right? <laughs> Everyone just smoking crack. <laughs> it was wild. It really was. I need some more water. There's some, or give me some of this smoothie. I made this smoothie. It's strawberries with banana whey uh, protein. <sighs> Frozen strawberries. So it's like cool. It's like cold. It's so good. Are right, you ready? And then what's our next place? Oh yeah, we go back to Paris after Italy, and uh, it was that was fun. There was no real stories. We just had another amazing meal. Got hit on by the waitress a couple times. That was always fun. And this was before I got my fucking shitty ass haircut by this woman. She just uh, I've talked about I talked about it on the last episode on uh, Monday I believe, but she fucked me up. I told her I don't want a buzzer. I don't buzz, and she goes, okay, boom, buzz it all off, everything, it's all gone, and she shaped it all weird, too, she's a, she, I will never see her again, anyway, we're on this plane ride back from Paris, and let's just be honest about Paris, your airport fucking sucks, your airport sucks, figure it out, having a wait time of that long was so bad, me and my little brother had a cut, and in line by 500 people because we were just standing in a line of 50,000 waiting to get to our fucking plane and they're checking passports like this passport you give it to them they go scan it on some shit and like okay there you go and you're like you're the sloth from Zootopia right now what the fuck is going on? Do you not see all these people waiting? So we had a cut line and the police were like, You stay back! You stay back! And we're like, alright, alright, alright. And we waited till they turned around and they were like, alright, let's cut. And then we just moved the things and we just got in front. And they're like, fuck these people, dude. We're gonna miss our flight. And we did. We were the, me and my little brother, there was three people to board the plane last. Me and my little brother, and then we had to wait three extra minutes because there was some person that decided to wait in line instead of cutting it. And people were mad that we had to wait for that person. And I was like, I know, I can't believe we had to wait for them. We were here, though. We had one minute to spare. Our takeoff was 1045. We got there at 1044. Running in. <laughs> so bad. So bad, dude. God, I fucking hate Paris' airport. I'm trying to think of, let me think, was there anything else about the airport? They didn't check our bags either. No one checked the weight of our bags. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I left clothes behind thinking that it was overweight because of you fucks. And no one even checks the weight. And the airport just fucking sucks, dude. 
All right, so then the plane ride back, <clears throat> the plane ride itself was the worst thing I've ever experienced, dude. I've never been so close to God. Like, I thought I was going to die that day. Here's what I say. In a different life, I truly believe that I died on that airplane. Like in the parallel universes, timelines and shit, Christopher Nolan, Interstellar, Rick and Morty, I died on that plane. Okay. I had such a terrible feeling about this plane ride in Italy or in Paris the night before. I was like, I don't, this, something is wrong. The whole time to get onto the plane was, I was wrong and we're waiting in lines and everything was just bad. It was bad. We get on the plane, dude, and I can't sleep. I stayed up so late the night before to try and sleep on the plane and I couldn't sleep. And uh, I didn't really want to drink the wine because it kind of felt oozy. I didn't feel that good. But I was like, I'll drink some. So I drank a bottle of wine to try and chill me out. You know what I'm saying? But this was this, the turbulence was. Well, we're, at, we're over the Atlantic Ocean, right? And then all of a sudden the seatbelt sign ding clicks on. And you're like, oh, fuck no. What's about that? And then. And you're like, oh, fuck this, man. And you're sitting in the back of the plane because you read and researched that if it does crash, that's the best point of survival. But that's the one that's kind of taking all the most shit as the wind comes off the plane. So you're really feeling the turbulence. And man, I was terrified. I thought we were going to die. We were bouncing up and down and wiggling like this for an hour and a half, dude. Over the Atlantic Ocean. It was pretty terrible. I had all of Nirvana's grunge and screamo playlist that they had on the plane just blasting. I don't give a fuck. There's a poor woman sitting beside me, some kind of teacher, some kind of professor, white lady, probably about 62. And I didn't give a fuck. She was like, she clearly didn't want to listen to my Nirvana music, but I was like, sorry, I got to do this right now and listen to fucking rape me, rape me, rape me. And fucking territorial pissings and in bloom and all the ones just on repeat just screaming into my ears so it was pretty tough i thought i was gonna die but i know we made it we made through it and i landed on the ground and i was like wow and then he skid he skidded landing our landing was a skid is the best way i can explain it it's like when you have a fat square rock that's thick and you try and skip it and it gets like two or three skips where it's like, and then it hits the water. That was our plane. Our plane was banking in and out like this. And I was like, he ain't, he's not going to land this right. And then my little brother clicked on the, the camera where you can like see the actual tire, like it's underneath the plane. And he's literally like going like this, like about to land it. He's not like, he's not flat and this going to put it down. He's like going like this and you're like, oh fuck. And then he hits it and we like skid. And then we skid back the other way and everyone grabs their seat. They're like, oh, and then he skids again and then then we land. And you're like, was this the pilot's first time flying? Like, what the fuck is he doing? It was pretty wild. That that plane ride fucking sucked. But once again, they fed you well. So I was like, I mean, if I die, at least I'm dying on a full stomach. You know what I'm saying? Like, it feels a little bit better. But here we go. We're at 48 minutes. So let's just try and get into our uh, our main topics, which pretty much are one, two, three, four, five, six things. Here's my tips and tricks. Airbnbs suck if, if, if you have to meet up with the person to get the key. If not, if the key's in a little lockbox and you can just go put in the code and get the key, Airbnb is fucking amazing. If you have to do an Airbnb where you have to meet up with the person and say hi and they show you the room and shit, fuck that takes way too long and then most of the time the beds are are uncomfy i'm because i like a certain bed i sleep a certain type of way and these beds were just nowhere near as comfortable not even close next tip trains suck i already talked about that you need the backpack that's the best mode of transportation i already talked about that knowing no language in any of these countries sucks dude paris they speak some language or some english and that was about it not much else Maybe a little in Italy, but that was about it. So in Germany and shit, when you don't know language, it sucks, especially on the trains trying to figure out where you're going and which platform and shit and just talking to people, ordering things. It's hard. But so you have a translator. No shit. Easy, easy tip. 
get a bike. Yes, dude. If you're in any of those places that are listed, just rent a bike. It's so much better than walking around. It's because at least on some days, because after a while you're gonna be like, we've walked like 10 miles a day and we've been doing this for 18 days. Um, my legs are starting to hurt. I'm not used to this shit. Get a bike. It's the best. Just do it. Trust me. And then my last thing, can people in Europe just literally tell us when we sit down to a meal, a tourist, do you tip here or not? I just, no, I don't know. Okay. So every time you're tipping, but then I can't tell, are you upset with me for tipping or is that the right thing to do? Because that's what we do here. But then I look up on the websites and no one, no one gives me a definite answer. So do we tip? Do we not tip? Just let me fucking know. Put it on the menu or some shit. I don't know. And also bring a book. Bring a book and then bring a journal. You should journal every day while you're there. I highly recommend it. Plus you need something to read. But alright, that's it for today. Um, thank you guys for watching. Comment, like, share. Subscribe if you're going to actually be a part of the team. Do not subscribe if you're not. This is where the big leagues are. Uh, that's, yeah, Jake on traveling through six different countries in Europe. I love you all. Have a great day. Be productive. Bye.